All right, so in this example, we want to find the voltage at two specific points in the circuit, which has two batteries and a series of identical resistors, okay? So it should be noted that this symbol here means grounded. So in other words, the potential is zero. So anytime you see that three bar symbol that's like a pyramid, that means ground. This circuit is connected to a, a ground, which is another way of saying, well, it's kind of like an infinitely large reservoir or sink to dump the charges, okay? So an example of that is, well, when you ground a battery, right, or ground a, a circuit, say, in your car, that ground wire attaches to the actual body of your car, right? And thus that body is attached to the rubber tires, which typically are attached to the ground, right? So any excess charge goes into the ground, okay? So what we want here is to, or the strategy really for this problem, is to find the current in the circuit. Overall, there'll just be one current and thus we can use Ohm's law in conjunction with Kirchhoff's laws to find the voltages at V1 and V2 at those points. Okay, so the first step I would suggest doing is to redraw this circuit, but um, redraw it a little more simply, meaning let's find the equivalent resistance for those two resistors there. I'll call them R4 and R5. That means I'll call this one R3. R2, I know they're the same, I know, but f for this purpose, I'll, I'll differentiate them. So we have left battery going up to R2, then over to R3, and then I'm gonna draw it, let's see, let me do that. Then we have the other battery, and then R1 at the bottom, okay? And so, redrawing the resistors, R1, that's the EMF one, R2, R3. Now I'll call this R4, 5, and then that corner is connected to ground. Okay? All right. Whoops. We might as well keep V1 and V2 in there. Remember, those aren't necessarily circuit elements, they're just locations in the circuit, right? So our goal is to find what the voltage value is at this, those locations, okay? So what is R4, 5? Well, those two resistors there and there are in parallel, right? The, the current coming from this battery is split off that direction and that direction. And then they're recombined over here at that node. So these two are in parallel, thus we add parallel resistances inversely. So we have one over R4 plus one, of, whoops, I just realized I did them the same. That was a really big eraser. Let's fix this here. I had that over labeled in white. There we go. So let's try this again. That is R5. Ugh. Okay, there, small eraser. All right, R4, 5, now we're good. So 1 over R4 plus 1 over R5, if they're both the same of 2.43 ohms, we can simply write this. 1 over 2.43 plus 1 over 2.43 equals 2 over 2.43. And R4, 5 is, I believe, 1.22. Let me check real quick. R45, R45 is, yes, 1 over 1 1.22 ohms, okay? So now we're one step closer. We can write this circuit element, or this circuit, a little more simply even. We can combine all of the resistors and just get one effective resistance. So we have EMF1, EMF2, 
that's ground. And now this is the total equivalent or effective resistance. And that can be found, since now they're in series, this is one circuit loop, now they're all in series, so we just add them algebraically. So that is R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4, 5. Right. And so 1, 2, and 3 are all the same. R4, 5 is 1.22, like we just found. And so thus the total here is, let's see, check my notes, 8.51 ohms. Right. So that's the equivalent resistance in the total circuit. And now all we have are two batteries and one equivalent resistance. Thus, we can easily find the total current in the circuit. Right. So the current I, using Ohm's law, is now the total voltage. So E1 plus E2, which, let's write it like that. E1 plus E2 over R equivalent. And then E1 is 4.46. And E2 is 10.7. Much larger voltage. All over 8.51 gives us a current of 0 0.743 amperes. And this will come in handy when we find was it when we use Ohm's law in the circuit, okay? So that's the, the current. Now, let's see, going back to this middle diagram, I just want to worry about that section of the circuit because, in a way, that's its own circuit. It starts with some value that will determine and then as you go towards ground, you increase in voltage at the battery. And then when you move across this resistor, you decrease voltage such that when you reach ground, you should be at zero. All right? So some number, then you increase the voltage, then you subtract voltage, and then you should be at zero. So I'm going to use Ohm's law in just this section of the circuit. So let's see. On the next page... We'll start with some unknown voltage, V1, that's what we're, we're finding. And then as I move, well, upwards, I'm going to cross the E2 battery, meaning since we're going in the direction, right? Since we're going in this direction, we increase the voltage. So plus the value for E2, and then, since we're going across E4, 5, we have to have a voltage drop equivalent to the current times the resistance, 4, 5. Right? And so that should bring us down to zero at the ground. At the ground right there. And so we know the value for E2. We know the value for I and R4, 5. So we can simply solve this for V1. So this should be, our current was 0 0.743 amps times the R45, that was 1.22, minus E2, which was 10.7 volts, and we should get a value of negative, little g, no, <laughs> minus 9.81. That was just very coincidental. So V1. There you go. It's a negative, which is interesting, right? But since it's a negative value behind the battery, when you cross the battery going, you know, upwards, we'll say, you jump up in voltage, and then you have to drop back down a little bit to reach ground, right? So we'll see what value V2 has to hopefully make sense of the direction of current here, okay? And so now, let's do the same exact process, but at the point for V2. 
So now we'll start at V2 and go, say, this direction to ground. We'll start here. Because we're going up or from the negative to the positive terminal, we'll increase voltage. And then as we're moving across R2 and R3, right, that actual equivalent resistance, actually we could do the same here. It might be easier, right? Then, actually, no, we can't do that. We have to go here, right? Because this equivalent resistance is not the same value as simply R2 combined with R3. So we have to go V2, increase voltage across E1, then decrease the voltage across R2, decrease the voltage across R3, and then straight to zero. So our equation should be, whoops, V2 plus E1. And then if you want to combine those resistances, R, two, three, you can, and you should be at zero at the ground. So we'll need to calculate what R, two, three is really quickly. Since they're in series, right here, in series, it's simply 2.43 plus 2.43, right, which is... four point eight six okay now solving for v2 we have i r two three minus e1 current value still the same minus what was that four point four six and now I can't do that in my head, but it should be, there it is, negative 8.03. Negative 8.03 volts for V2. And so they're both negative. Uh, however, the difference between them, well, which one's larger? V2 is slightly larger. Right, V2 is slightly larger than V1. The voltage in this section of, of the circuit is larger then in this section, and this battery is larger than that battery, so the current should be going this direction. Okay, So that's how you kind of break down a circuit using a grounded um, circuit, right? This, I think, is the first example with this ground, um, but that's how you find the voltage at certain points in the wire of a grounded circuit. Thanks for watching.